united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. I'd like to welcome you to United with Christ. Good morning. What a blessed day it is. I am Reverend Moselle Nervous, the proud pastor of Fellowship of Love Christian Center at 3800 Olympic Avenue, El Paso, Texas. Our worship times are 9.45 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and we have a lunchtime Bible study at 11.30 on Wednesdays, and then a evening Bible studies on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. I'd like to thank uh, Grace Randall for this opportunity to be on United with Christ uh, these fr coming Fridays. Uh, last week, this today, and then the next com two coming Fridays, <laughs> the next two weeks, let's say it that way. And I want to also thank you for tuning in today. Um, let's just bow for a word of prayer. Lord God, we just thank you for this day that you have made, and I thank you for this opportunity to share my convictions. I pray that someone in our TV audience would be blessed, encouraged, um, receive revelation, and we give you the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Well, after living in El Paso for almost two decades, uh, I moved to San Antonio, Texas about six years ago. Uh, I lived there for four years before returning back to El Paso to become pastor of Fellowship of Love. While living there, the church that I attended had a midday Bible study on Wednesdays. Uh, it was something I wasn't used to, but it, they had developed it because they had a lot of elderly um, members and uh, they wanted to be able to come out midweek and coming at night just was not feasible for them. Some of them didn't drive. And so they developed this noonday Bible study and uh, amazingly, um, it just really took off and people from all over the city, people who belong to different churches, different denominations would come and they liked the fact that they could have lunch and hear a word all in one hour. And it was truly a blessing. So uh, the first part of this year, uh, our church decided to uh, kick off lunch with the Lord. And uh, it's, as I said, on Wednesdays at 1130. And the first topic that we discussed was being stuck and how sometimes you have to shift gears. I use the analogy of a car being parked with the engine running, but you're not going anywhere. And so it takes you shifting gears to move or to go forward. Another topic that we discussed was open doors. And that leads me to what I want to talk to you about today. Before I moved to San Antonio, Pastor Leroy Brown, the, past, the proud pastor of House of Prayer, gave me a word. Uh, he told me that God was laying before me an open door. Now, we talked about uh, these prophetic words last week. And one thing that I shared with you, that it, when it's truly a word from the Lord, it will come to pass. And so Pastor Brown, uh, I mean, Leroy Jones did not know that I was planning to move away from El Paso. And, but he felt led to give me that word. And it really encouraged me because I didn't know what God was going to do. And so uh, he looked me in the eye again and he said, uh, you're going to be walking through some doors. And I thought, okay. Well, well, as soon as I got to San Antonio and got settled, uh, opportunities came for me to return to El Paso and minister. Minister in women's conference. I was asked to be a guest psalmist. I was asked to preach at church anniversaries and even was asked to close out a mortgage burning service. And that was at Fellowship of Love, by the way. Yes, it was a true prophetic word. 
and it was true, a prophet is without honor in its own home. It seemed it, it wasn't until I left that the door swung open. I want to look at Revelations chapter 3, verse 8. It says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Now, although this passage is talking about something much bigger than our natural opportunities, I want to take some liberties and also talk about those natural doors. Now, Jesus came to earth to restore the relationship that was destroyed in the garden. You remember when Eve ate the fruit, yes, she ate it first, and then Adam ate the fruit. They both disobeyed God, and the relationship was severed. But aren't you glad it didn't stay that way? I mean, God immediately put a plan in action to reconnect us. Jesus came and he gave his life. And notice I said he gave his life. Because John 10 and 18 says, no man takes my life, but I lay it down freely. This is the door that is literally being talked about in this passage in Revelation. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection opens the door for believers to be in a relationship with the Father. John 10 and 9 in the Amplified Version says, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. So we understand that the door Jesus has opened is the door of salvation and liberty. John 8 and 36 in the King James Version says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And as my mother would say, you are sure enough free. We don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. We are free if we are in Christ. And I don't know about you, but that is something to certainly celebrate and shout about, that you don't have to be a slave to sin, that you have a choice. Now, I want to talk about the doors of opportunity. As we embark on this year, 2019, we're in the third month, March. Uh, I think it's important to recognize the doors that God is both opening and that he is closing. I tell you, I don't claim to know it all, um, but I have been around long enough. I've seen God do enough things in my life and others' lives. I, I feel like I've come to a point of maturity in Christ where I can recognize when he is opening a door and when he is closing a door. And so I want to share some of those things with you today. I believe the problem lies is when God closes a door. Um, we don't want to accept it. We're trying to pry it open. We're trying to uh, kick it open. He's closed it. He's put the bolts on it. It's locked tight and we are standing there kicking and crying and prying and trying to get the crowbar to open it because we think we know better than God. And just as bad, when God opens a door, we're too afraid to walk through it. We don't think God knows what he's doing. We think he's picked the wrong person. But I tell you, we have to trust him. Again, I believe I mentioned this last week in Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Um, my mother had a saying and I found it to be true. Uh, my mother was from the South and she had quite a few sayings. Uh, but she said, opportunity is like a man who has hair in the front and is bald in the back. 
If you don't grab hold of it when he's coming, there's nothing to grab hold to when he's leaving. I'm going to say that again. Opportunity is like a man who has hair in the front and is bald in the back. If you don't grab it when it's coming, you cannot grab hold of it when it's leaving. Now, I'm going to let that sink in with you uh, because I know you're trying to figure out what in the world. If you're taking notes today, I'm going to give you three questions to write down. And you can ponder them and answer them for yourself later on. The first one is, can you think of a time when God closed a door in your life and later you were able to recognize that it was for your good? Again, can you think of a time when God closed the door in your life, but later you were able to recognize that it was for your good. Question number two. Can you re remember a time when a door of opportunity was open to you, but you were afraid to walk through it? Can you remember a time when a door of opportunity was open to you, but you were afraid to walk through it? And then the third question are there any doors that God has shown you that he is opening for you this year, 2019? And what will it take for you to walk through it? Are there any doors that God has shown you that he is opening for you in 2019? And what will it take for you to walk through them? Now, if you didn't get it, write them down. You'll still have opportunity because I'm going to be transparent and answer the questions. Number one, can you think of a time when God closed the door in your life? Later, were you able to recognize it was for your good? Um, I lived in Germany in the early 80s, and um, I had a four-month-old son, and I was working in a um, laundry as a, um, I operated the heat press, and uh, my main job was pressing drapes, which is a fancy name for curtains. Oh, it was so hot and it was so tiring. And uh, my four month old son became ill and had to be hospitalized. And I missed a few days of work, only to find out that I was going to be let go uh, because of those days that I missed uh, while staying in the hospital with my son. I was devastated. I was crying. I had never been let go of a job. Even though it was part-time, it wasn't really that much money. It was my pride. You know, how, how could they? I was probably the best um, curtain presser there was. But what I later found out is that God had closed that door because he was opening another door. Um, I just happened to go on a company picnic with my husband uh, for his job, and uh, his boss was married to someone who um, had a very high position at a college, and she was looking for a personal assistant. And uh, on a picnic, she interviewed me and hired me, and my salary was much more than I was making uh, pressing those drapes and burning up all at the same time. And so... Truly, God closed that door, and at the time, I didn't understand it. But after I had a job that not only um, allowed me some flexibility with my, my son, but a lot of times I was not even in the office because she was the president. She had to be here, there, and everywhere in meetings. And because I was her personal assistant, I was able to go with her sometimes drive her, uh, it included free lunches, um, just all kind of wonderful things that I could have never imagined. So why was I crying and trying to stay in this cleaners, in this laundry place, sweating <laughs> and not making a lot of money? Well, you have to think about your own doors that have closed and why you were trying to get back in 
when you look back, it really doesn't make sense. God has something better for me, and he has something better for you. Question number two, can you remember a time when a door of opportunity was open to you, but you were too afraid to walk through it? Oh, my goodness. When I was presented with the possibility of becoming pastor of Fellowship of Love, I was content in San Antonio. I was being a nanny to my granddaughter. At the time, she was the only one. Uh, it was a time I treasured because I was beginning to show her and teach her how to pray. Um, I witnessed her accept Christ and be baptized. And besides, I had never pastored before. I had been an executive pastor and had learned some very received some really good training, but this was different. To be the senior pastor, to be the one that made the decisions, this was something different. My question to myself was, could I do it? Do I have what it takes to be a pastor? I began to question God. I was like, God, are you sure? Um, I don't have what it takes. Um, I'm not qualified. <laughs> and you won't believe what God said to me. I said, God, are you sure? Do I have what it takes? Am I qualified? And God said to me, no, you don't have what it takes, but I do. No. You're not qualified, but I'm qualifying you. Ooh. God began dealing with me. Oh, my God. I was afraid, but I said yes. And I'm so blessed today. Next month will be my two-year anniversary. And what a blessing my church is to me. Not only to me, but to our community. It is a group of people, not perfect, but who love God and who love people, both saved and unsaved. And because of that, we are being blessed by God and striving to do his will. I tell you, uh, when God opens a door, you don't have to figure out all the answers. You don't have to know what's going to happen next year. Uh, God gives us enough light for the place that we're at and the step, the next step that we have to take. Too many times we want A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, amen. But if we will just deal with A. And when we're finished with A, he'll give us B. And when we finish with B, he'll give us C. We just need to know that he has the master plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. So when you understand that God has your best in his mind and in his heart and in his view, then you can walk in the path that he's setting for you. And when he opens a door, you can walk through it. And when he closes a door, you can just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. And then... Three, are there any doors that God has shown you he is opening you for you this year? And what will it take for you to walk through them? Now, for me, I personally believe God is doing, going to do something in the area of my finances. Um, and it's going to take me investing in myself first. Now, so many times we want God to do everything. But if you study your word, 
you'll know that faith without works is dead. And sometimes there are some things that God is going to require of you to get to that next level. I remember um, T.D. Jakes wrote a book called Woman Thou Art Loose. And he went all over trying to get someone to publish the book to no avail. And finally, the Lord spoke to him and said, why don't you take your savings and publish your own book? If you believe in your product and what you're doing, why don't you publish it yourself? And so he did. He took his life savings and he published the book. Well, if you're a follower of T.D. Jakes, you know that the book became a women a yearly women's conference. Um, it also was made into a movie. And all the money that he would have paid to a publisher, he got to keep. And so it came down to him believing in himself and investing in himself. Now, God is opening some doors for believers uh, all across this country. But if we wait on someone else to buy into our vision and into our dream, we might miss our opportunity. I truly believe that a lot of things that have been invented, a lot of things that have been designed, God probably gave them to some believers and they just, well, I don't have everything that I need. I don't have all the people. And so they were skipped over and God gave it to someone else. Someone else who did not care that they didn't know who to call or didn't have all the means. They just start making phone calls. They just start putting one foot in front of the other. And the next thing you know, Microsoft is there. The next thing you know, Apple is there. So don't say that God has not given you opportunity, but too many times you have not trusted God enough to walk through the door. So I hope that you will answer those questions for yourself as you sit down and ponder and think about doors that God has opened for you. Think about doors that God has closed in your life. Um, I just gave a one example of the door being closed, but there's been many doors closed in my life. Uh, in fact, before I came back to El Paso to be pastor, um, I was working, um, helping people get out of debt and helping people with credit cards. And uh, I quit that job to take a new job that was going to be helping people who were obtaining food stamps. And I was so excited because I thought, oh, I'm going to get to minister to these people because I don't know if you know it or not, but you are able to be a blessing in your profession. If you have a profession, um, God has called you to be a barber or beautician you can still minister and, and just be a blessing in whatever profession God has placed you in. So I was extremely excited. I was going to be working uh, with people who were poor, and I was going to help them. And uh, a couple of days into the training, I got a call and said, you know, not to come back. Now, keep in mind, I had been approached and talked to about coming back to El Paso and being a pastor, but I kept, you know, really trying to run from it. Well, when they let me go, I was like, Lord, what are you saying? What it, I, I started inquiring of the Lord because I wanted to know what was going on. And God brought it to my attention that he had called me to do something else. And so I had to surrender and I did. And I'm so glad today that I did. So as I close, um, I want you to ask God to show you the doors that he has set before you. And also inquire about doors that he is closing. Don't be afraid to walk through the ones that he has opened. 
and smile when you recognize that he has closed one because you already understand and know that greater is coming. He has something better for you. If someone walks out of your life, look at, look at it like God closed that door and you need to look around for the better. If God closes the door, don't try to pry it open. Sit down, be still, be quiet, meditate, ask God to show you what he is saying, where he's leading you, where he's guiding you. You don't want to miss it. This is too important. This is your future. And you want all that God has. So you want to live your best life, right? Well, I want to let you know that we will be back next Friday. And I'm so excited because we're going to have a special guest with us next Friday. We're going to have Pastor Amelia Elmore from the Second Baptist Church here in El Paso. And I'm, I can't tell you what we're going to be talking about. You want to tune in to hear what two female pastors here in El Paso are going to be talking about on United with Christ. But as we get ready to end today, I want to thank you for joining in. Um, I am excited about what God is doing and about the doors that he's opening for me personally and for my church for my family. I want to also remind you that our church is Fellowship of Love Christian Center, that we're at 3800 Olympic Avenue, El Paso, Texas. We have our Lunch with the Lord every Wednesday at 1130, except for on the second Wednesday of the month. We have our Bible study at 7 p.m. on every Wednesday night. And our church anniversary is right around the corner in April on the 14th at 9.45 a.m. And again at 3 p.m. We have guest preachers coming from Killeen, Texas, Greater Vision. And we're super excited about what God is doing. It's our 12-year anniversary, and I'll be telling you more about that next week. Hope you'll tune in to United with Christ. 